I'm a dermatologist and what I'm about to tell you regarding the skincare industry is probably gonna shock you. 99% of the skincare world is absolute <laughs> In this video, I'm gonna explain to you why there's almost no products that have convincing evidence that they work, how all of these skincare brands are basically competing on marketing and not actually how effective they are, and why this will probably be the last ever video I do about skincare. My name's Osama and I'm a dermatologist living and working in New York, but I want to be so much more than that by making videos on this channel focusing on how to live a better, more meaningful life. But before I focus my entire channel on that, I need to go out with a bang with my last ever video about skincare. So. Here goes nothing. I said that 99% of the skincare world is nonsense, so I wanna start my video focusing on that 1% that we actually do know. And it might surprise you to hear this, but there's really not that much. I demonstrated this recently with a tweet thread, which I will link in the description down below, but I'm gonna go one step further in this video and put all of that information into one infographic that is here on the screen. This, what you see in front of you right here, is the entire foundation for the absolute hellscape that is skincare content creation. The skincare industry and the rabid social media obsession that it has generated with billions of views on skincare contents on a weekly basis is basically the information on this infographic repackaged. The brand names of the products, the bottles in which they come, the specific content creator and the types of dances they do, those things might change, but the underlying information is basically what you're seeing on the screen here. Try it for yourself. Next time you come across a skincare video, refer back to this infographic and see whether or not the information was already on here. So how was I able to crystallize all of this information so easily? Well, it's because I am the best skincare content creator and that's why you should only subscribe to me. I'm also working on a few new dances that are gonna knock your socks off. Okay, not quite. The real reason is because there's really not that much skincare that is evidence-based. Trust me, I have studied the skin at a cellular level. It is literally my job to know how to improve the skin. So if there was some kind of ingredient out there that had a huge impact, there's no way it's gonna be kept a secret from me. And if you're sitting there thinking, what about that at-home face mask that I learned from TikTok where I blend seven essential oils together? I don't see that on your infographic. Well, yes, that's because that doesn't actually have scientific evidence supporting it. Unfortunately, online likes and view counts on TikToks are not a credible replacement for scientific research, and if they were, then this person here would probably be the head of the World Health Organization. And between me and you, he'd probably do a better job. So then how do I know which product to buy? Do you wanna know the honest truth? I don't know. And any skincare influencer that tells you that they do know which over-the-counter product has the best scientific evidence is lying to you and most likely has a financial incentive for giving you that answer. Here is all we can do. We can look at the ingredients of an over-the-counter product, cross-reference it with that infographic I showed you earlier, and tell you that yes, it contains the active ingredient which has been shown to help problems like yours. But the other reason that gets complicated is salicylic acid or hyaluronic acid or retinol, even if the ingredient label says the exact same word, those are not actually the same across multiple different products. We don't know how much exact quantity of that ingredient is in the product. We don't know the quality of the ingredient or the stability of its formulation. And we also don't know how well it's been constructed to actually penetrate through the skin barrier, which is a huge challenge. So I actually can't tell you that even some of my favorite skincare brands have amazing evidence that they work. Here's what I would need in order to tell you confidently that an over-the-counter skincare product has evidence of efficacy. I would need a large group of volunteers, around 50 to 100. I would then enroll them into a split-faced, double-blinded, placebo-controlled trial. What that means is for each volunteer, I would need a trained study supervisor to split their face in half, just using a marker pen or something, not actually split their face in half, and to then apply the product that we're testing to one half of the face, and to the other half, they would need to apply a cream that looked, felt, smelled exactly the same as the product we're testing, except without the key active ingredients. Neither the study supervisor or the volunteer would be allowed to know which is the real product and which is the control. I would then need these study participants to come back on a weekly basis for around four to six weeks, and we would take standardized photos using the same position, the same lighting, the same facial expressions. We would then give these standardized photos to a trained scorer who would rate them on things like clarity, evenness, texture, vibrancy, whatever you're testing for. Ideally, you'd actually have two scorers for any one set of photos, and if there was a discrepancy between their score, you would then get a third person to come in and give the deciding score. And then finally, at the end of the trial, whether it's six weeks 
weeks or eight weeks, you would then pull all of that data together and do some statistical analysis to see whether or not there was a significant difference between the product you're testing and the blank control. But nobody has that level of data for over-the-counter products. Even the evidence-based skincare brands that your favorite dermatologists recommend don't have them, let alone these random boutique natural rejuvenating creams that don't even have safety data, let alone efficacy data. So then why do we recommend certain products? Basically, it's a combination of three things. Reputation, personal familiarity, and positive feedback loops. So reputation first and foremost, I tend to recommend products from big reputable companies because I know that at the very least they have done safety data to make sure that these creams are not gonna cause allergic responses in the majority of people who use them. That is way more than can be said for these random boutique Etsy creams where each week I have patients in my clinic coming in with full body rashes because they've used them. Next, personal familiarity, and this is where it gets a little bit murky. These skincare companies, CeraVe, Cetaphil, Aveeno, Neutrogena, they know that I'm a dermatologist and that I was a dermatology resident a few years ago, and so they've been sending me free skincare samples for years. And even if they don't send me skincare samples directly, they have made sure that all of the clinics in which I train have a bunch of free patient samples to hand out to them. Now naturally, when I have a whole wall of those samples, I'm gonna take some of those and try them myself at home. Once I've personally used one of those products, it is just human nature that I'm much more likely to recommend them as compared to another product when a patient asks me. So yes, that is why I am so likely to recommend CeraVe Moisturizing Lotion because I use it myself. That doesn't actually mean that CeraVe Moisturizing Lotion has some incredible incredible evidence showing it is the best moisturizer out there on the market. What it does mean is that that company's marketing department is really smart and it's made sure that its products are in the hands of dermatology residents and dermatologists. Once these products become the favorites of dermatologists, the rest of the population follows suit because they assume we have some extra special information showing that they're the best. And all of this leads to part three, which is positive patient feedback. Once I've given out these samples and recommended it to a lot of patients, naturally when they follow up with me a few weeks or months later and they tell me, hey, I love that new moisturizer or cleanser, that checks a box in my head and makes me much more likely to hand out that same product again in future. Now, all of those three are totally reasonable reasons why I recommend certain products over others, but I just wanna to emphasize to you that it's not because I know they have the best efficacy. So then why is there so much skincare content out there if there is so little that we actually know? This is where it's time to get super real, and I might even get closer to the camera, that's too close. Skincare has absolutely exploded in recent years, and it's not because we suddenly have innovative new ingredients that give better effects. It's actually because our society has become incredibly superficial with the rise of social media, and our skin is literally the outermost part of ourselves which interfaces with this world. Now don't get me wrong, I think it is always important to take skin health seriously. There's just no denying that non-stop photos and videos with all these filters have made Made people think that perfect skin is the baseline. It has given us all a collective body dysmorphia for our skin and made us think that even the smallest blemishes are somehow problems. So that has sparked this quest for perfect skin and with that hunger for skincare content has come a huge market opportunity for skincare content creators. There's almost no social media content for which there is more appetite and which will help your channel grow faster than doing skincare. And trust me, I have seen this firsthand. So far, I've put in fairly minimal effort into this YouTube channel and I somehow have 10,000 subscribers already. Whereas some people with incredible content about philosophy, life and history would have been making videos for years and years and would end up with 300 subscribers. The chances are most of you watching this video came here because you saw me on Ali Abdal's channel talking about skincare. And all of this comes with a huge financial upside too. Even at my scale with a fairly small YouTube and Instagram channel, I already get emails on a weekly basis from skincare companies. A lot of these companies offer three, four, five thousand dollars for just a one minute review. Thankfully, I'm in a stable enough financial situation that I don't have to accept these offers, but honestly, I see the appeal. But then put yourself in the shoes of these content creators who have just started a YouTube, TikTok, or Instagram. As they're starting to grow a following, they can't just keep putting up that one infographic I showed you earlier and tell people, hey, I've said all I need to say, just keep referencing that one video. There's a pressure to keep churning out videos on a daily basis, and so they have to repackage that content in new and interesting ways. And one way of doing that is by reviewing 25 different benzoyl peroxide cleanses and acting like you're doing a really nuanced scientific review when in reality you're just doing a snapshot judgment for entertainment value and it's really not that scientific at all. 
All of this has now led to a generation of people that have become skincare enthusiasts almost as a personality type. And honestly, if people wanna watch skincare content as a type of entertainment or hobby, I totally understand that. I waste hours on a daily basis watching YouTube videos about Manchester United transfer news or Call of Duty. So if it's for entertainment value, do your thing. I have no judgments on how you spend your time. But my issue is that I think these people think they're getting medical grade or scientific advice when they are really not. So here's the conclusion, the dirty little secret of the skincare world. Now that you have the information from that infographic, the next time you have an issue with your skin, find an over-the-counter product which has one of the right ingredients for your problem. Make sure it's the right price point, and my recommendation is no more than $30 for a product, and then just work your way through a few products, trying them out for at least six to eight weeks, because that's how long you need to try them to see if they work. And once you've found one that works for you, just stick to that. And if there's no over-the-counter product that seems to be working, go to see your dermatologist, because we can give you a prescription strength solution that actually does have the scientific evidence space showing it works. And beyond that, you really shouldn't care what any of these skincare content creators say because their incentives are to keep you watching, keep their channels growing, and to keep those sweet, sweet brand deals coming in. And on that note, this video was brought to you by... <laughs> It wasn't, it wasn't brought to you by um, any skincare company. That would have been a really bad idea. And in actual fact, I probably made sure I will never get a skincare brand deal ever again after this video. Now listen, if you enjoyed this no-nonsense style of content, I'm bringing the same scientific mindset, the same authenticity to my future videos that are gonna be focusing on how to live a better, more meaningful life. We're gonna be talking about things like mindfulness, religion, how to build deeper, more lasting relationships. So I encourage you to stick around and see if you enjoy them. But as for skincare, I have said all I need to say.